The village in it with a map and a plan No place too tidy for this determined man Crossing the counties one by one You'll see in every English corner a bit of history Welcome back to the Derbyshire Dales again, everybody. And the sun is definitely out now. All that mist that you saw in yesterday's Ashford in the Water episode has disappeared. It's all gone, which is a good thing. But we're not going to be in this place for very long because this one's really, really small. It's a cluster of houses that's on top of a hill. But it's that hill that makes this place so interesting. Unfortunately, though, the thing that makes it interesting, I can't actually access so i'm not going to be able to film very much of this to be honest with you it's going to be a basically one long driving shot and then a few of the actual village itself its name is brushfield Brushfield, Britrix Open Land. In the Derbyshire Dales today, we're in Brushfield, a tiny hamlet situated off the A6, deep in the heart of the Peak District. It's about eight miles east of Buxton. Brushfield is a name that even Derbyshire residents may struggle to recall, and that's understandable because you do need to know exactly where this is to know it exists. Brushfield is located on a steep hillside and has a grand total of just six houses, although it's seven if you include a nearby farm. In 2007 it had only three. All the houses, with the exception of one, lie on one single dead-end road. According to the UK census data in 2001 it had a population of just 13 people. I can categorically tell you there aren't many more than that now, some 23 years down the line. Despite its small stature and out of the way location, Brushfield is known to some outsiders. It contains some holiday lets which are run by two separate families. One of these cottages is called the Old Schoolhouse, a small one bed house made of stone. As you might expect, Brushfield has no amenities and relies on bigger villages like Ashford and Tideswell for its closest shops. So is there anything of note in Brushfield? Well, yes, there are three things in fact, but we can't actually access them. I'm talking about the three bowl barrows at Brushfield Hoff, Putwell Hill and Highfield Claw. So yeah, you might not know where this is, but it's good to brush up on your geographical knowledge once in a while. So to get into Brushfield, we've got to drive up a steep hill. In turn, that hill is off the A6, and that's what we're on here. There's not a lot to talk about in Brushfield itself, so here's a bit about the A6, which you might not know. Forget everything you know about the A1, or at least temporarily. When the nation's roads were first classified and numbered, the A6 was England's longest road. It runs from Barnet in North London to Carlisle in Cumbria, and passes en route through the heart of Derbyshire. It was designated as the A6 in 1921 by William Rhys Jeffries, the head of the Roads Board, who spent seven long years numbering all the A and B roads across the nation. Back then, the A6 was not the UK's longest road. That honour went, of course, to the A1, but the A6 was certainly England's longest. Let's not forget the A1 crosses the Scottish border at Berwick-upon-Tweed. In any event, we're now climbing a steep hillside and this mountain pass-like road with a hairpin bend halfway up it leads to Brushfield Village. It's a dead end. Once you start to see houses, you're practically out of road and into either a bridleway or the entrance drive to one of the residences. Parking isn't too hard though. With very few people living in these parts, there's very little competition for space. So this is Brushfield Village, all six houses of it. There are seven if you include a nearby farm, but it makes very little difference. Life up here is different to your standard village. In a hamlet this small and this tightly packed together, everyone knows literally everything about each other. This place was an ancient township in the parish of Bakewell, and it was incorporated as a separate modern civil parish in December 1866. 
It's understandable too that the 13 or so people who live here have opted to forego a formal parish council of their own. They do hold periodic parish meetings though. In terms of size, Brushfield only covers about 650 acres. It used to be smaller. In April 1934, Brushfield gained four acres from Little Longston, although I doubt it made much of a difference. Most of the land here was historically pasture. Brushfield has never had any kind of religious building, and I can understand that. There's no church or chapel, and the nearest Anglican buildings are in Tideswell and Eam. Children of this village have generally speaking attended school at Taddington, but that said, there is one property here that makes reference to a school. This is the old schoolhouse, which is used as a one bedroom holiday let. Now I've no idea if this has ever had any kind of educational history, I would lean towards not, purely because records are so scarce. And as far as Brushfield goes people, being attacked by flies here, <laughs> that's it. There's only six houses in the entire hamlet. There's seven if you include a farm, which is just to the north. But yeah, either way you slice it, it's a really, really small place up in the Derbyshire Hills. Now you can walk through Brushfield and continue along this Bradway because this path continues through this gate and goes out up into the hills. And there's something out there that makes Brushfield Parish so interesting. And that is what we're gonna talk about next. There are three scheduled bowl barrows around Brushfield. They're all on private land though. Two of them can be found at Brushfield Hoff and Putwell Hill, but it's the third of the three that's the most historically important. Highfield Hlaw is a Saxon barrow located on Lapwing Hill. What makes this so special is the fact that it's a pre-Christian burial monument that dates back to around 600 AD. In short, it's rare. Lapwing Hill is part of a limestone plateau and forms a promontory between Millersdale and Monseldale. The monument includes a subcircular barrow measuring 17 metres by 14 and a half metres, which stands around one metre high. Originally it would have been more uniformly circular and slightly higher, but ploughing has altered its profile somewhat today. In 1850 Thomas Bateman carried out a partial excavation of the barrow and found it to be of earthen construction with a central rock cut grave. It contained an extended inhumation which had been laid upon animal hides on a wooden bier or coffin. To the left was an iron sword with a sheath of thin wood covered in decorated leather, and a short iron knife which lay under the hilt of the sword. Above the right shoulder of the body were two iron spear points, while among the stones that filled the grave about a foot from the bottom were many iron objects of uncertain use. These included clenched iron nails, which would have been part of the coffin or beer. It's these remains that indicate that the barrow was built in around 600 AD. So in case you didn't already figure it out how small this place is, what we're going to do is we're going to walk back to the car from the gate where we left it a moment ago, which you can see there. We're going to walk through Brushfield back to where we started. And this is going to take me less than two minutes, I would, I would assume. If you're going to count, <laughs> start counting now. <laughs> I'm not uh, technically savvy enough to put a counter on the screen, but if I, if I was, then I would at this point, and you'd see how small this place is. Believe it or not, I actually met somebody up here as I was walking through the village earlier, um, telling me a little bit about the history of the, uh, the Chatsworth farms and, and how this was all linked together. Of course, none of these farms are um, linked to the Chatsworth estate now, they were all sold off. But yeah, these houses are basically it, it's all you can, can really find up here. They're nice enough, don't get me wrong, lovely little place quiet as well. You can hear the A6 in the background, but that's about the only noise you've got apart from birdsong, to be honest, which is quite pleasant, I must admit. So there you go, that's most of the houses. And then when you get to the end here, these flies are following me for some reason. <laughs> when you get to the end here and through this gate, which is where we began, that's where my car's parked. And uh, Middle Farm is above it there. That's Middle Farm there, which we saw when we drove in. Time-wise, from one end to the other, one minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> one minute and 40 seconds. There you go. That's Brushfield, people. Really small, isn't it? Okay, now we need to hop into the car again and drive back down the hill and back to the A6, because we're going to find our next village now, which is definitely a lot bigger than this one. 
Well, that was that. Brushfield is so small it's barely noticeable on the Derbyshire landscape. Nonetheless, big or small, I'll do them all, and we have seen ones that are tinier than this. Next weekend we're going just a little further along the A6 towards a village that has not just one, but two wells of interest. See you all there. Now just before I go, remember, this video is part of a huge project to visit every civil parish in England. That's more than 10,000. These routes are pre-planned, and due to time constraints, I can't cover every detail or walk down every street. Please don't complain if this video missed something out. I pronounce names how I choose to. I am very aware that local dialect may vary, and I don't take kindly to criticism about this. You've been warned. It's impossible to know everything too. If this video was terrible, make your own. If you're a regular watcher of The Village Idiot, you're not the only one. If you've got a small business, why not use my videos to advertise it? Leave a comment below if you're interested. And finally, thanks for watching this episode, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed this episode, and share it with your friends and relatives. It all helps to keep this mission going. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.